Hey everyone, it's Rebecca from Suburban Stone Age again. I just wanted to give you um, another update on a new thing that I'm doing and I've nicknamed it Incremental Solar. So um, what that is all about is as I expand into new directions and I'll give you updates on all of that, the drought has really, really changed the way I think about how I manage this landscape. Um, so more on that later, but that's led me to um, use ponds and as you saw in a previous video fish tanks in the greenhouse um, as part of the ecosystem back here but what I don't want is if I'm gonna add these new um, features to the landscape I don't want to create additional demand for grid electricity if we go forward and we add things that are you know subtle and beneficial to the to the ecosystem, I, I really want to try to develop it so that it's all solar powered. And that's kind of what you see here. So this is my proof of concept pond. I've had this running for about a month now. Um, I'm literally just letting it sit and mature um, and see how it does. There's some mosquito fish in there. There's one goldfish in there, but I haven't seen it since I put it in. Um, all kinds of pond plants, critters. Uh, algae's been really good, but the main thing to talk about today is the incremental solar that you see. And what that is is those little discs that are blooping water. You can see them right there. Um, those are giving me surface agitation and just kind of keeping the water oxygenated. They just are totally solar driven. So when the sun's shining, they work. When it's cloudy or it's dark, they don't work. And the pond just has to learn how to deal with that cycle. And then additionally, you may be able to see the um, current but the, I have a solar driven mini pump at the bottom and this is a stock tank, um, 40 gallon stock tank. It was like 70 bucks. I had it delivered off Amazon. So it's probably about 18 inches deep and I have that little mini solar power pump at the bottom and it's giving me a vertical current. So what I don't want to have happen is, especially as the um, weather cools, I don't want the pond to have all the warm water stay on the surface and all the cold water stay down below and get stinky and stale. So I'm creating that vertical current to keep the water um, circulating both on the surface, around and around, back and forth basically, and then from um, top to bottom and bottom to top. And that should be enough. Um, you know, it stops at night, so what? Pond has to deal, it's just part of how it is. So there's the little solar panel that's propped up on my log. And that log's going to be a part of the big pond that I'm digging right now. That will I'm shooting to be done by spring. Um, this will all feed into sort of that new way of thinking where, you know, I, I do my water changes for the water features, which are now chock full of nutrients from the fish and the other, you know, natural activity. I can harvest floating pond plants to use as fertilizer in place of the nitrogen that I used to get from lawn, uh, from a compost pile. So... Um, and by the way, the wildlife go absolutely nuts for this. Like it's so important. I've realized with the drought, it's great to have, um, habitat. Like this is the habitat. The wildlife absolutely positively have to have water even more necessary than they have to have food. So I have lots of food here for them. Um, fruits, berries, nuts, seeds, all that good stuff. But I've really learned that water, especially in this environment is where it's at. Thanks.